What's up my friends? It's Jesse here with REF Sense here on YouTube. Hope you guys are doing well today. So this video I'm going to talk about flankers and it seems like, I don't know, at least to me, that these days there are so many flankers coming out of already popular fragrances. It's almost like a bandwagon thing that somebody's just waiting on this new version of this fragrance to be dropped. Another new version, another new version. And this is kind of a, a low-key hint to Paco Rabanne to please stop making so many versions of Invictus. I know it's probably making you some money, but I'm just so bored. Please stop it. But at the end of the day, there are some of these fragrance flankers that are pretty damn good. But there are also some of them that are just absolute garbage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over seven, as always, seven fragrances and their flankers. I'm going to give you four that are awesome and three that you probably need to do without. Hope you're ready. Let's go. So how I'm going to do this video is I'm going to show you first the original fragrance and talk a little bit about it and then go into more detail about the flanker and then finally tell you whether or not I think you should get it. And this first one, it's a pretty simple and easy fragrance. A lot of people have it. It pulls tons of compliments and it's not expensive at all. It's Nautica Voyage. It's the... Uh, Salty aquatic fragrance. It's got some uh, some aromatic qualities to it. Only costs about eighteen to twenty dollars. And there are about four or five different flankers to this fragrance right here: Nautica Voyage Sport, Nautica Voyage Heritage, and so on. Um, most of them I don't think are worth getting because they just don't differentiate quite enough from the original. But this one I do think is worth a look. It's Nautica Voyage N eighty three, and this one right here. You definitely, you know, with all of them, you still have that Nautica Voyage DNA, but this one adds a little bit of a different spin to it because it has some lavender in there, a couple of different woody notes in the bottom, but my favorite part is the mint that you get right from the top. It gives this cooling, almost like a fall or winter time at the beach type vibe. I do see that it lasts about the same amount of time. You can still pull it off in the spring and summertime and I think it gives a little bit more depth to it as a matter of fact. So um, so I would say the difference between these two is that you would wear this more for the daytime. This one is going to be a little more versatile and I think you could pull this off at night as well. Uh, I think this one goes a little bit more expensive than the OG, but when I say more expensive, I'm talking where this one is like $18, this one's like $22 or $23. It's definitely worth a purchase, and I recommend this flanker. Fragrance number two, another popular fragrance that uh, if you don't purchase it retail and look for it online, it is going to be very affordable, and I think it is a great fragrance. It is Mont Blanc Explorer. This is the one that has some citrusy and woody notes, and a lot of people smell say that it smells like a more professional Creed Aventus. But it did come out with a flanker a couple of years ago. It is Mont Blanc Explore Ultra Blue. Let me just get right to the breakdown of this one. This one has some top notes of some pink peppers, some Sicilian bergamot, and then it's got some sea notes, some ambergris, woody notes, patchouli, and a little bit of leather in it. Um, when you put all that together, what does it smell like? Well, it smells like a mixture between TV static and baby puke. I really do not like this fragrance. I purchased this about a week and a half ago, uh, and I got it from TJ Maxx for $60, and that is about $55 more expensive than this fragrance smells, quite frankly. Um, I know I'm knocking on it. A lot of people in the fragrance community do not like this. Why did I purchase it? Well because I'm a fragrance reviewer and I wanted to make sure that if I ever talk about this one, I know what I'm talking about. I've worn it on my skin twice and both times I wanted to shove an ice pick directly into my ear. It is just the worst fragrance. I would recommend wearing this fragrance to no events ever. Uh, it is best for um, what season is it best for? Only when you die should you ever apply this on your skin. And make sure it's a closed casket funeral or make sure you are getting cremated. It is not as bad as YSL Kuros, okay? 
uh, but it's definitely in my fragrance collection in the bottom 10 fragrances. I wouldn't recommend this one whatsoever. Please, please, please do yourself a favor and stick with the original Mont Blanc Explorer. Next up, we've got fragrance number three, and we're going all the way back to 1995 with the release of one of the more popular clubbing fragrances, and I think this one has actually aged very well. It is from Jean-Paul Gaultier, the original Lamel, and what a hell of an atomizer too, man. Mm. The original Lamel is just really, really good in and of itself. It's got that vanilla. It's got some of that mint and lavender in there. I think it is an absolutely incredible fragrance. Um, and I know that I gave Paco Rabanne Invictus a lot of crap earlier because they have about 50,000 uh, Invictus flankers. This one has got kind of the same deal. There are a lot of flankers for the original Lamel. But my favorite is Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mel. And I'm talking... Even with the LeBeau that's out there, the Lamel Le Parfum, um, this one still is my favorite. And it's easy to tell. The thing I like is that it's easy to tell that this has the same DNA as the original Lamel. A lot of these other ones, it's hard to pick up on that original Lamel DNA, but not with this one because it still has that vanilla, still has some of that lavender and those minty facets, but it's gonna be a little less intense and more sweet. We've got some pear, we've got some lemon, a little bit of cinnamon in there, along with some amber and patchouli. And what that all comes together to bring you is a romantic scent. And the way I describe these fragrances is, I feel like this is one where if you're gonna go out and just kind of have a great time, um, and maybe maybe you're just now starting to get date somebody, but you're not too serious, this is gonna be your fragrance. But if you're looking to maybe tell that significant other, you're about to say, I love you for the first time, this is gonna be the one you want to wear. This is gonna be a lot more romantic and a lot more intimate. But the projection is there, the performance is there, and it's about $75, $80 if you find this at the right place online. So there you go, Jean-Paul Gaultier Ultra Mel. This is a definite recommendation for a flanker. Next up for fragrance number four, we have a scent that is uh, yet another clubbing fragrance from the early 2000s. It kind of took the place of the original Lamel, and it is still wildly popular even today. It is the original Paco Rabanne's One Million. Now, I say it's popular today, not with me. This is not one of my favorite fragrances at all, and I do not reach for this like ever, okay? But having said that, the flanker that I'm going to present it's crazy because I love the fragrance itself, but I do not like it as a flanker. It's a very it's a very tricky situation it finds itself in, but let's talk about it a little bit. It is One Million Parfum. This one was only released a couple of years ago, and I absolutely love it, but I don't recommend it as a flanker, and here's what I mean. All of the other... 1 million fragrances from the 1 million Lucky, the 1 million Privé, God rest its soul, and even the 1 million Elixir, those are very sweet and very uh, fall and wintertime based fragrances. However, a couple years ago, Paco Rabanne came out with this out of the blue summer scent that they decided to market as another 1 million fragrance. As a standalone fragrance, it smells amazing, but it just doesn't seem to fit anywhere with this original scent. I don't pick up any of the same DNA or anything like that, but overall, I absolutely love it. It's got some tuberose, some salt, some leather, some ambergris, and some cashmere, and along with a couple of other uh, floral notes in there. All together, it is bright, it is invigorating, it is incredibly, well, I say incredibly sweet. It's, it's pretty sweet, but... Mm, it is super good. So what do I so what do I say overall? This was just not marketed properly in my in my humble opinion. I'm not a professional in any way. Uh, I don't think this was marketed properly. If this were its own standalone fragrance, I think it would do much much better. So recommending this as a flanker, I do not. Recommending this as its own fragrance, I absolutely do. So hope that makes sense. But there you go. Now it's time for fragrance number five, guys, and I am super excited to talk about this one. Number one, because it's from my favorite designer house, which is Dior. 
but also because this is one of their more unique fragrances and it is very, very masculine. I'm sure that a lot of you guys already know which one I'm going to be bringing up. The original fragrance is the Dior Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette. And some of you guys I also know are going to be cringing when I talk about this one because it's the fragrance that smells like gasoline. And it does, okay? Uh, the notes that make it smell like gasoline are the combination of leather and violet leaf that really bring out that petrol smelling scent. Uh, you know, if you want to get all macho about it, this will definitely put some hair on your chest. You know what I'm saying? However, as much as I love this fragrance, I purchased this other scent, which is a flanker of the original. And it's very hard to find, but when I saw it uh, listed on one of the discount sites, Joma Shop, I jumped on it. And it was a complete blind buy for me, and I absolutely love it. It is one of my top 10 fragrances in my collection. It is the Fahrenheit Le Parfum. My friends, oh, this one is an absolute work of art, and I will definitely use up a couple fragrance or a couple sprays right here. Oh, it is so freaking amazing. Now, I'll be honest, it still shares some of that DNA with the Eau de Toilette. It's got that violet leaf in there. Um, so you can definitely still smell a little bit of a hint of that gasoline bit in there, you know. However, the leather is replaced with some coriander and some cumin. Oh, but where it really shines is that it brings about some sweet booziness to the fragrance. It's got some top notes of suede, some licorice, and some Sicilian mandarin. But then as it dries down, you actually have some rum and you've got some vanilla in it as well. And I absolutely think, I'll admit that this one, not a safe blind buy, okay? This one right here though, it is absolutely safe to blind buy. Um, it's going to really help your nose to acclimate to this type of, uh, I don't want to say abrasive, but very pronounced scent profile, you know. Um, but that, I'm sorry, I keep, I keep smelling this. I'm getting weak at the knees when I'm smelling this, man. It is so freaking good. Um, but that rum and that bourbon, uh, that bourbon vanilla just really, really bring a new level of beauty to this fragrance. I'm telling you guys, if you don't hear anything I say throughout this entire video, this fragrance right here, this flanker of the original Eau de Toilette is 100% worth the money. You'll probably find it for $125. I myself would pay $175 for this fragrance if it were priced there. So, oh, the Dior Fahrenheit Le Parfum, 100%, you need to buy it. All right, it's time for fragrance number six. And I'm sorry to say, I got to knock you down a few pegs now. I mean, we come off of that. Oh, I still got it on. We come off of that Fahrenheit. We're at such a high level, but now we're getting back down to some bull crap now. So we're going to go with a Zaro Chrome as the original fragrance right here. This, a very affordable and very fresh and clean fragrance that I think uh, teenagers and young adults really benefit from. And it is very soapy and clean, this one. It literally smells like a bar of soap, in my opinion. Good for daytime, good for spring, summertime. I myself do not reach for this one very often. Uh, from time to time, if I feel bored, I may reach for this one, but it is definitely not on my uh, my top of the line. But there are quite a few uh, there are quite a few flankers to this one out there, and I am sorry to tell you, one of these that I'm going to be presenting to you is a Zaro. I can't even remember which one this is. A Zaro Chrome Legend. Here it is now. This bottle actually looks a little bit different than the one that you probably saw right here over my shoulder. That's okay. These fragrances, uh, sometimes this fragrance sometimes comes in a different bottle, but this is one I actually got from TJ Maxx not too long ago. And the way it kind of smells, some of these some of these notes in here are green and kind of aromatic. It's got some green apples, some tea, some musk, some bitter orange, uh, some vetiver, and oak moss, uh, amongst a couple things. But when taken all together, it smells a little bit like you took that same bar of soap that Azaro Chrome smelled like. You rolled it around in some Lipton tea leaves and then shoved it right up somebody's ass, pulled it out, and then rubbed it all over your body. 
Uh, unfortunately, that's what this Azara Chrome smells like. I don't like it. I've only had this one once again for about two weeks. I bought that at the same time that I bought the Ultra Blue from Mont Blanc. This one, only $25 though. So, you know, I felt like it should be in my collection to review. I saw it. I wanted to grab it as I didn't have any flankers of the original Azaro Chrome. Uh, but the Azaro Chrome, whatever this, I, I can't even remember it now. The Azaro Chrome Legend, I'm shaking the camera. The Azaro Chrome Legend, it's not worth it, guys. Uh, there are a few other Azaro Chrome flankers out there that I've been told are a lot better. I have not tried many from this line and I need to get more into it, but from what I can tell, at least with this one, save your money. It's not worth it. Last up on the list, my friends, is yet another clubbing fragrance. It doesn't seem like you can get away from them, does it? But they are some of the most popular types of fragrances on the market, and they typically have the most flankers. And this one's no exception, and this one is probably what I would say is the standard for clubbing fragrances these days. It is Versace Eros. And, um, yeah, not everybody can get down with this, but I still think this one is nice. It's, it's just really well known for that apple, mint, and vanilla, and it is just super, super nice. The performance is there. Um, it gets a lot of compliments and everything, but this flanker right here, I think where this one was good, this flanker made it near perfection. It is Versace Eros Flame. My friends, this one... This one takes the cake, okay? Because where you have the apple and the mint and vanilla right here, you still keep the vanilla, but instead of the apple, you've got citrus. Instead of the mint, you've got spice with some cinnamon. So this is gonna be a little bit cooler. This is gonna be a little bit spicier. This one, uh, this one's still good for fall and winter time. This one's definitely fall and winter time. And where this one lasts for about eight to 10 hours, this one lasts, hear me out, 16 hours and up, and I'm not exaggerating about that. This one is a very loud and very uh, in-your-face type fragrance, but oh my God. Oh, it is so freaking amazing, my friends. I know that I've said that a lot about this one, but you need to hear me out. If you're going, I like it better than the Eau de Toilette. I like it better than the Eau de Parfum. I like it better than the Parfum version of the Versace Eros. Um, I'm telling you, just the uh, the Eros Flame, man. I I'm very very impressed with this scent because I didn't. I mean, I didn't think whenever I first smelled this and I had had it for about a year, I didn't think how many different directions can you go with something like this, other than to make like a parfum version and this and that. But this one right here, it was very very well done. So if you were interested in getting a better version of this one, that is. Um, you know, kind of keeps that same feel, but has a slightly different DNA. I definitely recommend going with the Eros Flame. And there we have it, guys. Seven fragrances and their flankers. Sometimes they're awesome. Sometimes they're not so awesome. But whatever it is, don't be one of those guys that goes out and buys flankers just because it's a bandwagon thing. Don't let it be because you're waiting on the newest release of an already established fragrance. Sometimes that already established fragrance is much better and they're just trying to make money based off of its name and popularity and they fail later on down the road, you know. Uh, learn to appreciate a fragrance based on how awesome it is as its own fragrance, you know. Take that One Million Parfum, for example. Yeah, I don't recommend it as a flanker, but I do recommend it as its own standalone fragrance, and that is what you can learn to appreciate any fragrance as. That's all I'm saying. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Find me on all my other channels. Be sure to buy stuff from the descriptions of my videos. I do get a little kickback, but you know, I got to fund this channel one way or another. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time.